Chatsworth is known as the Palace of the Peaks. And when we started going through the attics, we found lots of things relating to that house and obviously to the Devonshire family. But we also uncovered an extraordinary story about a palace in Piccadilly. Piccadilly in London, the great street, where many of England's most notable families had big houses, was the site of Devonshire House. And that was the seat of the family in London for many years. The Dukes of Devonshire had their house remodelled by England's greatest working talent, William Kent, the Palladian decorator and architect, whose work revolutionised both interior and exterior design in England. And all of those interiors were carefully kept at Devonshire House until it was demolished in the 20th century. Then they were all shipped up to Chatsworth for storage. But interiors like these remain today in Burlington House in Piccadilly. Here's a doorway from the great series of staterooms at Burlington House. Here you get the door surrounds, again with these classical works and very elaborate, ornate overdoors. The picture frames, and here you see one very similar to a picture frame actually in the sale today, all of which bear the imprint of the great Palladian architect. When Devonshire House was demolished in the 1920s, into the story came a wonderful person. Evelyn, wife of the ninth Duke, when all of the fireplaces, door surrounds, shutters and skirting boards were taken apart, she carefully labelled them all, took them up to Chatsworth and arranged for them to be preserved in the attics. So that meant when we came along, we were able to recreate the interiors of one of London's greatest houses. We decided to have an attic sale here because there simply isn't enough room. Although it's a big house, there's a lot of stuff and it's been accumulating over generations. We can never see a, a, a future for those things here. We don't think we're going to be moving to a bigger house. Wonderful doors, over doors, fillets, and most importantly, perhaps, these fantastic Kent fireplaces, which will be in the attic sale. So we thought we'd give it an opportunity to find a new home and a new life. I'm standing in Green Park on the edge of Piccadilly, and closer to us, of course, is the site where Devonshire House used to stand, on two blocks stretching from Piccadilly up to Berkeley Square. Here at Devonshire House in the late 18th century, we meet one of the most interesting characters of the family, Georgina, Duchess of Devonshire, wife of the fifth Duke. She held court for 30 years as one of the undisputed leaders of London society, gambling with a reckless audacity, flirting with the beau monde. When she died in 1806, thousands of Londoners filed past her coffin as it lay in state in the saloon. Only one thing on Piccadilly still serves to remind us that one of the great families of England had their political power point right here in the capital. The gates to Devonshire House. There, surmounting the very top of the gate, is the snake, the symbol of the family. And then down below, you see the stag's heads and then the family motto, Cavendo Tutus, which loosely translated means never throw anything away. It's really appropriate for this cell. So this is an extraordinary sale, David, because normally when you're selling the attics of a great stately mm. home, that's what you're selling, and it's the things from that house. But the, the Devonshire's married into so many families, they had so many different estates, so many different periods in their lives, that we've got property from almost a dozen different houses. Absolutely, and it's been quite a complicated jigsaw puzzle. When there are pieces from Lismore Castle in Ireland, um, the family's home outside Bournemouth, Compton Place, Chiswick, the great London Palladian villa, mm. the London townhouse, Devonshire House, obviously. Chatsworth itself. And things actually running right up into the 20th century? Completely, yeah. We start right in the 15th century with some fragments of rood screen. We mm. think from Bolton Abbey, and then we move right up to a pinball machine <laughs> in the 1980s. Um, okay, very so, yeah, Tommy. A very eclectic mix. Yes. Originally, the first Duke had a room, the state closet, the climax to the state enfilade. The room was fitted by these extraordinary lacquered panels dating from the very end of the 17th century. These were extremely luxurious objects imported at great expense from China. The techniques employed were extremely time consuming. Layer upon layer of lacquer built up and then incised with a sharp blade creating small reserves that were then filled by hand with coloured paints. The precious objects mounted in these fields that run around the side, highlighted with gold, it must have been very, very theatrical when it was installed in the state closet at Chatsworth. A 
cabinet on stand of the very best quality. Late 17th century, William and Mary, and attributed to the workshop of one of England's greatest cabinet makers, Garrett Jensen. A kaleidoscope of walnut veneers cut through the branch, costly and time consuming. We've got the original William and Mary cut steel key, exquisitely produced in wrought steel. It still turns, opening to reveal a fabulous interior. These wonderful geometric patterns. This piece would have come from the state apartments at Chatsworth, such as its quality. A fantastic piece linked to an extraordinary cabinet maker, producing work for an extraordinary family. We have components from one of William Kent's great white marble chimney pieces. This is from the ballroom at Devonshire House. This wonderful centre tablet, centred by a scrolled cartouche holding the mask of Diana. And either side, we have these wonderful sunflowers, the petals curling, symbols of warmth, nourishment and power, produced in 1735 two years after Kent had produced another very similar chimney piece, currently installed in the green drawing room at 10 Downing Street. The sixth Duke, returning from his grand tour in Italy, was fueled by what he'd seen out there and looked to local sources to emulate work in hard stones and the materials that he'd seen out there. This table illustrates that wonderfully. Sourced from local materials on his estate, the Ashford Marble and Quarry Works, he employed craftsmen to create these extraordinary Pietra Dura panels, emulating great Florentine workshops. The Tazza, dating from the early 19th century, the craftsman has taken a block of red serpentine marble and is really demonstrating his skill and also the best way that he can show off the specimen. It's wonderfully sharp, curved mouldings. This sale's got over 20,000 items and all of those are going to be up in the market at Chatsworth. The catalogues admit two people to the view, and we're on view from Friday the 1st of October, so I hope to see as many of you as possible up at Chatsworth for what promises to be the attic sale to end all attic sales. Mm -hmm.